it's clear that if I had all the money in the world, I'd be out looking for the best, neatest, classic antique car that I could find. You know, American cars have been famous for the last 40 and 50 years for producing some very, very popular cars that later on became much more than just collectibles and classics, very valuable as investments. And you're looking at one of them now. The Corvette was a hot car when it came out, and it's even hotter now, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later. This is a particular Corvette that is worth more than you could possibly imagine, because not only for a car to be valuable did it have to be popular when it came out, but the history of the car is also important. In the case of this car, who was the first owner? And this car happened to be purchased brand new by one of the original seven U.S. astronauts. Now, I want to call in the current owner of this car right now, Marvin Friedman. We've had him on the show several times over the years. Marvin, Hello. thank you nice to see for you. being How with you? us. Thank you. This is, this is a knockout car. This is not a car, this is a piece of Americana. The first time that I sat in this car, I got goosebumps and chills because I grew up in South Florida in the late 50s and 60s and I idolized, like most people did, our true heroes, which were those first astronauts. Not that the ones today aren't heroes, they all are, but it was a very, very dangerous and hazardous job back in the early days of now, NASA. Before we get into that, I want you to tell us about the car. I want to open the door here and you tell us what we are looking at. Well, what we're looking at is a 1967 Corvette. It's considered to be the holy grail of Corvettes. Uh, the biggest motor possible, it was 427 cubic inches. The factory rated it at 435, but in reality, it was closer to 500 horse. It has a four-speed close ratio, all synchromesh gearbox, a 370 positive traction rear end. This car has leather interior. It has the headrest, which were an option, the special wood wheel, tilt and telescopic steering wheel and uh, uh, has the off-road exhaust system. I, I want to call your son in here for just a minute. Sean, come on in here for just a minute. Uh, I want you to, to do the honors of opening the hood. You, you've been, you're 24, right? Yes. How, how long has your dad had you into these cars? Basically since I could walk. <laughs> um, growing up, he was an exotic car dealer, so I was around Ferraris, Cobras, Lamborghinis, and uh, I was exposed at a pretty young age. Do the honors, open the hood for us. We sure. can take a look under the hood. Tell us what we're going to be looking at here, Marvin. Okay, well, we're going to be looking at the high compression 427 engine. Uh, it has a special uh, camshaft, which was solid lifters. And uh, like I said, it, they rated it around 435 horse at 6,200. It was closer to 500. Incidentally, Bob, this car was delivered in Florida, in Melbourne, by Jim Rathman. who I'm, Race car driver. And I'm proud to say a friend of mine since 1958. Uh, Jim won the Indy 500 in 1960 and has the honor of being the oldest living winner of the Indy 500. Now, I want to take a walk over here to, the, to, your, to your wall here. Uh, this is the wall that, that commemorates the original owner of this car, who was Virgil Gus Grissom. Just uh, For those who don't remember, let's you tell us who he is. Well, uh, Gus Grissom was, of course, he was a hero of the uh, Korean War. Uh, very distinguished and decorated and was one of the seven uh, astronauts. I believe the program was called the Mercury Program, which was established in 59. When John Kennedy took office in 1961, the famous speech of, we will land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Unfortunately, President Kennedy didn't live to see it, but uh, and America neither did Gus Grissom. Gus no. Grissom died on the launch pad. No, it was very tragic. It, in fact, it's, we're coming up on the 40th anniversary. This January 27th, 2007, it will be 40 years. Uh, this is a shot over here of the capsule. It was a flash flyer. Uh, it was ignited by a spark. In those days, they had 100% oxygen in the capsule, which they immediately changed. And these are pretty sad shots. This is the shot of the funeral and uh, Betty Grissom and his son. But uh, down here, a more happier moment, it was because of Gus Grissom and Roger Chaffee and Ed White, who all gave their lives for our country, that we were able to walk on the moon. Back, right, in back over to the car, because now I want to talk about why this car and Gus Grissom go hand in hand. Now, Jim Rathman delivered this car. We talked about how he was a race car driver, but the astronauts actually played with these cars and raced one another. Well, absolutely. The first one to really become a 
Corvette nut was uh, Alan Shepard, and Shepard was crazy old Corvettes. He owned one back in the mid-50s, and it was Shepard who kind of got all the other guys interested, and a tremendous rivalry erupted between Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom. And on a Saturday night, and I spoke to Jim Rathman yesterday evening, he told me on any given Saturday night, you'd see Shepard and Grissom, Shepard in this car, and excuse me, Gus in this car, and Shepard in his car, dueling it out, racing for maybe a beer or for dinner. And here's something interesting, Bob. Most of the time, Gus won. Alan was a much better driver, but Jim had secretly, at the bequest of uh, Gus, put a different rear axle, a 456, which made the car accelerate much quicker. And then he also had the rear wheels flared and put slicks on them. And by the way, the car was originally blue, but when it was restored about 20 years ago, the owner at that time loved this red, and it's been red ever since. Uh, your, your place, of course, in Fort Lauderdale, Cars of Yesterday. Rick Hopper, uh, your partner for a long time. Rick, you, you've not only been into cars, but also been into the history of the, uh, the astronauts as well. Yeah, I uh, grew up in the 60s, and uh, the space race, that was the biggest news of its day, and I remember when I was in first grade, they, the teachers, they gathered everybody, brought us into the cafeteria, big black and white TV set, and we watched, I remember specifically watching Gus Grissom orbit the Earth three times, and from that time on, I was hooked. Now this car, Marvin Friedman, is worth a lot of money even had it not been owned by Gus Grissom. Yes, today a uh, body off the frame, which is what we call the restoration, every nut and bolt of car is disassembled down to the frame and put back to absolutely, actually better than new. The paint was not this good back in 67. Brings 250 to $300,000. Now how much value is added to this car because of the history? In other words, what do you think this car is worth today for someone who had the money to buy it? I can tell you this that we turned down two offers for $500,000. And the reason that my son, Sean, and Rick and I elected not to is because we're going to do something very special. I'm proud to tell you that we are establishing a Gus Virgil Grissom Memorial Scholarship Fund at Purdue, where Gus graduated in the science of aeronautics. Uh, and um, this will be what's called a scholarship in perpetuity. The money that we're donating will be sufficient enough that each year the interest will be able to fund the scholarship. Now, when I started this piece, I said that hypothetically, if I had all the money in the world, if money wasn't an option, this is something I'd like. Marvin says this car is worth approximately $1 million. Now, if we're not talking hypotheticals for you, like if Jay Leno, if you're watching right now and you want to buy this car, this car is actually going to be for sale. Yes, it's in, in, uh, toward the end of January? Yes, it'll be January 20th. It'll be on a Saturday around 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening at the Russo and Steel. They are known for their muscle cars. They've sold Cobras in excess of 2 million. It takes place Saturday evening in Scottsdale, Arizona. And they have a website, Russo and Steel. There's also a website for this car, and, Gus Grissom Corvette. And if anybody forgets, you can log on to NBC6.net. Sean, get in the car, start it up, drive her off. NBC6.net if you want more information on the car, where it'll be sold, but you gotta have a lot of cash to buy this one. Talk about some hot wheels. I know, pretty swanky. Wow, well, still, <laughs> oh, okay, Lonnie and the tie. Well, still ahead, other luxurious forms of transportation. Lonnie and I take a tour of a floating mansion with music. That's right, plus Joel Conwell is here with a special edition of the Departure Lounge. He is going to show you how celebrities check out South Florida in style. It's coming up. Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey reimagines the circus with the biggest changes in 50 years. So new, it's beyond your wildest dreams. NBC6 and the Miami Herald invite you to the opening night performance of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey on Friday, January 5th at 7.30 p.m. when tickets are $15. You've never experienced a Ringling Brothers like Circus of Dreams. Come an hour early for the free all-access pre-show. Playing at the American Airlines Arena, January 5th through 15th. Get more at VisionWorks with our three best sales. Right now, you can get any frame in the store, including designer frames, for only $59.95. No exclusions. Or get two complete pair of great-looking glasses for just $99. Or you can buy one complete pair of glasses and get the second pair free. Even prescription sunglasses. And most glasses are ready in about an hour. At this price, I can get both pair. VisionWorks. Why pay more?
Now you can find the most properties for sale or rent. The best home search experience anywhere. Photos, tours, mapping, and more to help you find the perfect home. Go to NBC6.net's real estate page today. NBC6.net, powered by Move. I know rheumatoid arthritis is painful, but I didn't know it could attack my joints. Scientists believe that in moderate to severe RA, your immune system can cause serious damage. But Enbrel enables me to fight progressive joint damage. Enbrel works on your immune system to suppress inflammation, help relieve pain and fatigue, and keep joint damage from getting worse. Enbrel gives me energy to do many of the things I love. Because prescription Enbrel suppresses your immune system, it may lower your ability to fight infections, such as an open sore or the flu. So don't start it if you have one. Tell your doctor if you're prone to them or if you've been treated for heart failure or if you experience persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness while on Enbrel. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, lymphoma, nervous system, and blood disorders have occurred. Common side effects included injection site reaction, infection, and headache. Ask your rheumatologist and envision your possibilities with Enbrel. There are things you can do now to save on one of your biggest expenses while saving the environment. From major savings on your electric bill to small changes that can make a difference. Get cutting edge tips that will boost your lifestyle and your savings. Green is green. Today at 2 on NBC6. On a yacht right now. This is a yacht. This is not your living room. It's not my living room. It's mega yacht. And if, and of course it's not his because it wouldn't be so nice. Trust me. So come with me, Lon. All right. You, you Follow need, me. I'm gonna leave. You need the way. All righty. This. Oh, is this 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 is, is Tom Lewis. A barbarina. Hey Tom. Hey Tom. My good former to see you. neighbor from Tampa. Tom, I gotta tell you, I'm picking up these. We're supposed to be uh, shoeless. Shoeless here. <laughs> All right, well, hang on here one second. But you know what? Well, since, we're gonna make an exception. Yeah, for since Tom and I go way back, I don't have to remove my shoes. Look. Look. Oh. You know, uh, it never <laughs> fails. Whenever you know we do a fitness piece or something, I always have a hole in the sock or a boat. I'm what's home. what's up with that? You, you know what? This is elegance and high class line. You know. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, 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 well, Tom's gonna take us on a tour. Have you ever that. been on?